Hello everyone, and welcome back to San Cabrillo Zoo. Hope you guys are having the most wonderful of wonderful days as we get started on the exhibit for the Somali wild ass, which is actually going to be shared by our Grants or Plain Zebra today. Without further ado, welcome back to our San Diego inspired zoo, San Cabrillo Zoo. Well, welcome everyone back to San Cabrillo Zoo, where today we're going to be building for the Somali wild ass. Couldn't be more excited about this animal. It is so perfect in game. Love the animations, love the texture on it. It's fantastic. So in case if this is your first video for San Cabrillo Zoo, welcome. Uh, obviously the best place would start would be the start, uh, but glad that you guys are stopping by nonetheless. Hope you guys enjoy this one today. So today we are building a very, very much urban jungle uh, kind of inspired habitat. This is exactly the habitat where the um, zebra, I forget what species or subspecies or subpopulation, I don't know zebras guys, I'm sorry, but it's where the zebras currently are with a donkey. Uh, now for me, I was like, you know what? The, the Somali wild ass is basically an undomesticated donkey, so that's what we're going to be using it for today. Uh, so I am very much inspired by Urban Jungle for most of the work in here. Uh, now I notice a lot of people are kind of saying like, oh, Leaf, this, uh, <laughs> this is just San Diego at this point. It's not San Diego inspired, it's just San Diego. I will be saying, I will be sort of um, kind of getting my own style as we get into other sections. Obviously, right now, I kind of just want to make sure I get the kind of vibes of San Diego first, and what better way to do that than kind of just rip it off. <laughs> but I hope you guys appreciate like my small little takes on it as we make our way through this entire zoo to begin with. Uh, specifically with these tiny little small minute details like this fence over here, which kind of acts as keeper access. Uh, that's one of the things I kind of wanted to recreate over here, and we'll be using that in our next episode as well. Part of one of the things that I always tell people to do is create a style for your zoo and create reoccurring themes. You might notice that while all of the fences in this section aren't really the same, they're based off of kind of like that same initial blueprint, which is super important to keep in mind as you make your way through the zoo. It's always super important to kind of like locate that theme. What kind of materials is your zoo using? Where do they source them? Would they make kind of like different things with the same materials? That kind of stuff is always super important to keep in mind as you kind of flesh out your zoo, especially if you're going a lot more on the realistic route. Now over here, I really wanted to have these kind of like mud banks really stick out. I wanted this habitat to feel nice and long without being too overbearing. Uh, obviously, the real urban jungle is very small. Uh, those habitats are relatively outdated. Originally, this uh, section was called Elephant Mesa. Big shout out to my friend Son for giving me like this little history lesson. But this was originally the area where the hippos, where the rhinos and the elephants were all kind of stationed. And eventually they kind of got upgraded. They got different habitats. They either moved to the safari park. They moved to Elephant Odyssey, all these other sections. But you oftentimes would see animals getting like rotated in and out of here, be it like flamingos, be it porcupines, fennec foxes, cheetahs. I believe I will be doing a cheetah habitat. I think that's going to be super fun. I might even incorporate the domestic dog mod in there. I think that might be kind of fun to do. Uh, keep in mind, I will be eventually weaning into modded species for the zoo. There's just some animals that I want to bring into this park that don't have in-game counterparts, specifically like domestic dogs. I guess I could throw a dingo in there, but I really don't want to do that. Instead, I'll happily just throw down a little pooch or something like that. I feel like that'd be super fun. But one of the things I do want to keep consistent in this section are these beautiful raised flower beds. Uh, instead of using the typical mulch like I always do, I really wanted to have this bright underside of the flower bed stick out because it really is such a gorgeous texture that works so well with the surrounding environment that it really fits this kind of drier section of the zoo and it really creates this lovely effect once you actually do get plants in there. It just seems so bright 
and I feel like that's exactly what we need as we work into this section a little bit more. Obviously, we're working with a lot more um, kind of grays. We're working with a lot of tans, a lot of browns. So any way that we can incorporate different colors in here, whether it's the greens from the uh, kind of flowers, whether it's like different kind of colors of flowers, like reds and stuff like that, it's always super important to kind of bring in that kind of stuff as a way to help make your kind of sections feel a lot more visually appealing. Uh, and moving on from there, I will be incorporating some of these fences too. Again, a little bit adjusted from what they originally were. And I apologize if you hear some clanging in the background. It's kind of getting on my nerves, but someone's putting away dishes right now. So it's like, what can you do? Um, but you can see I am laying down these fences first and foremost. And then what I do after that, because I have all these pathways relatively on a slope. I kind of adjust the fences as I put them down. There's a small bit of overlap with some of them where you can kind of see like double poles, but I try my best to make those inclines a bit more organic to the point where you don't really notice those double poles until like the bottom of the slope. I think having that kind of like visual interest of a slope can help so much in fleshing out your zoo especially when it comes to giving it a little bit more realism obviously the original elephant mesa and the current uh urban jungle is very flat it's a mesa what are you gonna do but they find a really interesting way to kind of work with that and make it feel a little bit more visually appealing and it helps it feel like you're going on a little bit of a journey with that being said I kind of incline these slopes these little pathways as you kind of make your way through here uh, just as a way to help it feel a little bit more interesting and give like these sections a little bit more dimension than just hoof stockyard hoof stockyard hoof stockyard all over again what I'm also doing over here is these kind of like um, inverted fences. So this is something that the current zebra habitat actually has that looked really awesome to me. So I was like, okay, listen, we got to incorporate as much of this as possible. I thought it looked super awesome. So I try and put down as much of those as possible because it just looks so cool. I don't really play with the inclines of those all too much. Not only would it have been like a challenge to get it to look good, but since it was on the flower beds and those are all flat, I figured it would be fine just to allow that to be a little bit more flat. Now what I'm doing over here is a door. Uh, nothing too crazy, I'm just doing a custom metal door. I use the mud pillars as a way to get perfect increments of these metal bars just to make it feel a little bit more um a little bit more satisfying, make it look a little bit more visually interesting. Uh, so I kind of line these up to the size of the zebras and the Somali wild ass. They're relatively small. This would kind of just be an easier way to get like uh, equipment in the habitat and stuff like that. I also do a second door. Uh, relatively soon. I think this one is kind of just more like a keeper door, but the one I do right after this is a much more fun one. You'll actually see me put that put that together relatively soon. But this one does have like that kind of hinge on the top, so I thought that was kind of fun to make. So I kind of push that over to the side a little bit, and then after all is said and done, I kind of just leave it right there. I also get started on the backstage as well. Again, I'm not doing full interiors. I do kind of line them up at least, so if I do feel the need to kind of go back and make these interiors feel a little bit more fleshed out, I can. Uh, but for the most part, I'm keeping the dimensions relatively realistic and making it feel like it's coherent. What I also do over here, the um, real urban jungle has this kind of very interesting door that's kind of made out of faux rocks I'm going to put on the screen right now. Uh, but it's just a very cool door. Um, I'm going to try and find it on maps right now. But it's just very cool. And I tried my best to get it to look good. I really hope that what I was able to put down gives the effect of what I wanted. It's just a very, very interesting piece of architecture that I feel like we're not really able to do in Planet Zoo itself. Yes, just yet. Because all the pieces in here are um, they're just kind of difficult to work with. Uh, like the faux rocks, they are very good for certain purposes, but for other purposes, 
they don't really look too good. But what I essentially found was a kind of cool technique was using the 3D printed walls from the conservation pack and kind of putting these faux rock stairs on top of them just to create a little bit of three dimensionality or like a little bit of 3D-ness, I guess. Try and find the right word for that, I dare you, because I sure as hell don't know. I put down those little beams right there just to make sure that they are on hinges, and essentially from there I start to decorate the walls a little bit more. This section is relatively old, so you'll see older styles of these concrete walls. Uh, San Diego Zoo was actually a pioneer for these kinds of faux rock walls, and they still very much are if you look at like their latest sections like... Um, Elephant Odyssey has a little bit of it, but more so on the Africa rocks. Their immersion just goes out the wall, and their use of materials is, like, bar none. Like, no one gets close to them, except for the WCS. I'll save that for a later video or something talking about, like, you know, the best zoo designs in the world, or rather, America, because that's what I'm more accustomed with. But you can see... I get those all started. I don't really continue the walls all too much because I was kind of felt, it felt a little tedious at this point. So I wanted to give myself a little bit more of an organic task. Again, I kind of bounce between habitats. It's just so much easier for my little ADHD brain to comprehend. Uh, so I kind of bounce in between like, oh, if I'm feeling a little bit more uh, creative right now. I could go and do like the foliage work. I can make it feel a little bit more organic for someone to walk through. If I'm feeling a lot more pragmatic, if I want to get like something very, um, like very by the books done, I could work on the faux rock walls and have that be like very precise, have that be exactly how I would want it to be. So that's what I do right now because I was like, okay, I'm done being creative. Just give me like a menial task to do. So you can see I'm using a whole wide variety of faux rocks, not really a whole wide variety because we don't really have too many shapes, uh, but these long kind of skinny ones, I think that's faux rock seven, uh, very, very useful for kind of decorating these walls, especially when it comes to uh, creating these nice little divots, these nice little gaps in between like, you know, the crevices and stuff like that. Super awesome to create like this nice 3D texture throughout them. And I also do the same on that side as well. I do decorate those sides with um, just very flat plaster pieces soon. You'll see that in a little bit. And the purpose of that, also making custom doors for this section as well. I swear, I swear guys, I'll put out like the custom blueprint set relatively soon. Maybe once I'm done with the urban jungle section, quote unquote, um, I'll put out the blueprint set for you guys to use so you guys can kind of like reformat it and make your own little sections for it. I feel like that'd be so fun. Uh, but yeah, I essentially have that kind of like blank side of the faux rock walls on the other side. Because when you are working in a realistic zoo, you need to keep in mind that you're not going to have your artists or your exhibit designers design faux rock walls for the back side of the habitat where no one will see. That's just a waste of materials. That is just a waste of time and resources. Uh, and plus, the animals don't care what faux rock looks like. It's just mostly for the guests, if I'm being completely honest. Um, so, essentially, when you do see that stuff, I also copied the roof over here because it was too good not to use. Um, but when you do see that kind of material, it's mostly for the enjoyment and the immersion of the guests. Animals don't really care about how their habitat will look. Um, I'm sure that some do, kind of like higher intelligent ones like primates and stuff, tend to care about naturalism in their environment, but it's mostly for the appeal of us humans, just to have us be like psychologically aware that these animals are in a cared for environment. Very interesting stuff right there, I could kind of talk your ears off about that, but let's move on. Um, and also, yeah, it's just a waste of resources, you wouldn't want to spend your money on that kind of stuff. But you could see I get started on the general infrastructure inside of the holding area itself. Uh, so I have these cross beams, like these iron girders kind of sticking out every so often. You would oftentimes see this inside of like these holding barns. It's very pragmatical. It's very um, practical, uh, practical use of those kinds of like pieces. So I have a few of those in there and I get started on the general surrounding foliage. I have this be a little bit too lush in this section. I kind of want to go back and make it so that it's less lush 
and uh, have it be a lot more along the lines of like dead bushes and stuff. I had a few of them in here, but overall it's a little bit too green for my taste, especially for a section that's supposed to feel a little bit more dry, a little bit more arid, if you may. Um, I just want to go back and fix that up a little bit because it's not exactly the vision that I had, uh, but I only found that out after watching it. So that's something that happens right there. When I get started on this habitat itself is this little piece of real rock in here. Um, it's just a little interesting tidbit of this habitat that I wanted to include. Just a little something to throw down in there. I throw down a few pieces of enrichment as well to help keep these animals a little bit more occupied. Uh, so I throw down like that feeding barrel right there. I throw down like the um, kind of like the brush that they kind of brush themselves against. Scratching post I guess you could call that. And I also start getting work done on the habitat itself. Uh, I kind of leave this towards the end just so that I could kind of like wrap it up with this. It's like the finer details that really help tie the entire section together. And I thought it would be fun to kind of replicate what the arid animal pack trailer really did in the videos. And like the screenshots and stuff. And that's use the faux rock pieces. Like the tiny little pebbles. As a way to create a little bit more visual interest in the habitat itself. Uh, obviously the real habitats in urban jungle are not decorated. They're just sand pits. It's kind of sad to see. But I mean it's it has its own specific charm. That I don't know. We're going to get rid of it someday. But we might as well appreciate it for what it is right now because someday we're going to look back and say, oh, I remember those habitats back in the day. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But you can see I'm going through and selecting some pieces, just making sure that the ones sticking out too much are kind of sunk in a little bit more and making sure that the opposite ones are sunk out enough uh, so that you can actually see them. So that's kind of one of the purposes of going through and adding all those pieces in there. Also using the general clusters in here to create a little bit more diversity. And yeah, that's really it. Then I get started on actually placing the foliage itself. Again, when you're working with hoofstock, say goodbye to that foliage if it's in a habitat this small because they will just eat all that stuff up. But regardless, we're building in Planet Zoo, so it doesn't really matter. I care more about like a beautiful habitat. Uh, so that's kind of the purpose of me throwing down like all these dead kind of like trotted down plants and grasses and stuff like that so that's kind of the purpose of going through here and doing all that stuff with the rhino habitat we had the purpose or not really purpose we had the advantage of separate yards uh, so typically when you do see habitats with separate yards you might be noticing that one doesn't get as much use so you'll see a lot more greener plants going on over there because typically an animal wouldn't really walk over those. Uh, but unfortunately over here we are working with something that would eat all of the plants in sight. So I kind of opted for a lot more dead plants, be it that may. What I also do over here is this little planter that they actually have in the habitat right now. It's nothing too crazy, but I did want to um, incorporate these small little tiny motifs inside of the habitat just to help it feel a little bit more special, make it feel like it's, you know, just feel a little bit more dynamic. I double the tree up on itself so it does get a little bit more height so that the animals kind of wouldn't like browse from it. Instead of actually doing a piece of... Uh, mesh cage. I actually opted for this little technique found out by Just Goron. By the way, incredible Planet Zoo creator. You guys should definitely go check him out. But it essentially uses fences instead of um, actual pieces. And it, you can create a much more dynamic looking mesh cage because of that. I thought that was a really, really fun effect to have. So that's kind of what I threw down in there. Also throwing down some of the decals in here, just help it feel a little bit more pretty. And here we are in the cinematics. Love this cinematic tool. It's fantastic. So without further ado, thank you all so much for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. If you did enjoy this build, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Hope you guys have the most wonderful, wonderful days. And I can't wait to see you all in the next video of San Cabrillo Zoo. Take care and bye bye